Hello there, this is Scott from HobbyProjectSite.com. This is a review of 3D Systems Cubex 3D Printer, specifically the Duo that has two print heads. It's been a long time since I've been this excited about a new tool. Let's see if it lives up to my expectations. As of the making of this video, the single color Cubex is $24.99, Duo is $29.99, and the Trio is $39.99. The things that initially attracted me to the Cubex were the specifications, particularly the 10.75 by 10.75 by 9.5 inch print volume. The finest layer height of 0.1 millimeter and XY tolerance of 0.2 millimeter is also pretty good. You can use either PLA or ABS plastic in a wide variety of colors. When you open the box, you'll find a setup poster, toolkit, glue, jet wiper, red and white PLA cartridges, a USB drive, and the Cubex itself. The first thing I noticed were the track links that were holding up the wiring were popped out. I don't think this is a big deal. The links weren't broken, they just needed to be popped back into place. Cutting away the zip ties and removing the packing material went easily. Next you need to install the print material. You start by clicking the on-screen menu and the Cubex will guide you through. Undo the screw, pull a bit out, trim it neatly and install. It's all pretty easy. The next part of setup is to check the level of the print surface and set the Z-gap. The level function moves the print head around the corners of the surface to use as a guide. There are three screws to adjust to ensure the print head sits at a consistent height across the surface. I think the toolkit was supposed to have an Allen driver that fits the level screws, but two of the three drivers were exactly the same, so I guess somebody messed my kit up. When you first open the Cubex software, it'll ask you how many print heads you have and what type of material you have. After activating your Cubex, you can download a set of free models. I picked the Pawn to start with. Full size, it's a very long print. The build software enables you to position the model on the print surface and scale it to any size that will fit. Scaling to half is a good first test. Click the Build button and set the parameters of the build. The build dialog has all the options for quality and support type. I like to use thin fill and a 0.25 layer height. Click build and the software will generate a build and show you how much material you're going to use and how long the build will take. Save the print file to your USB drive and take it to the Cubex. The Cubex will read the print file from the USB drive. The one that was included in my kit was less than reliable. After several prints that failed with file read errors, I decided to format my own USB drive as FAT32 and I haven't had a problem since. You need to apply glue to the print surface to ensure that the model won't move. Getting the glue right can be touchy. If you have too much that's too wet, sometimes the bottom layers will slide. Too little or too dry and it won't stick over the long run. Prints are initiated from the Cubex touchscreen. You plug in your USB drive, touch the print option, and select your file. The Cubex will heat up the print heads and start to build. I love watching this thing work. I've spent hours watching it build layer by layer. I won't make you sit here that long, so I'll fast forward it a bit. When the Cubex completes a build, it'll lower the print surface so you can remove it. Soaking it in warm water will help release the glue. The kit provides a scraper for you. It would be nice if that scraper was stainless steel because mine's already rusted. The quality of the print isn't as nice as I'd hoped. The pictures of prints I've seen led me to believe that the Cubex was capable of a nicer finish. According to the documentation, the 0.1mm layer height will produce the highest quality model. The one on the left is 025 millimeter. The only change on the right is 0.1 millimeter layer height. I think I like the 0.25 better. The Cubex purchase includes a license for Cubify Invent. This 3D design software is relatively easy to use. 
The basic idea is to pick a plane, draw one or more 2D sketches, and then use that sketch as the outline to cut or add material. Each operation you perform is recorded in a list. You can go back through the list, edit what you've done, and then regenerate the model. I really like the way that works. I saw a few quirky things. Sometimes the rendering strikes me as a bit off. Overall, I like this software. I've been able to quickly create the shapes and the models that I want. Minor visuals aside, I have seen some more serious issues. My Cubex seems to have trouble with larger parts. The walls of this print should be vertical. It looks like the print head drifted progressively out of place. I've also had some problems with the ABS print cartridge. At some point, the plastic inside became unspooled. I got several errors relating to filament flow before I realized the material was stuck and would no longer pull out of the cartridge. I cracked it open, the material popped out, and now I have a $100 bird's nest. Support has been responsive, and so I'm hopeful that these issues will be resolved. My expectations for the Cubex were probably too high. The quality and aesthetics aren't as nice as some of the pictures led me to believe. Of several 3D printers on the market, the Cubex is said to be the one that just works out of the box. I didn't find this to be the case. Something that initially printed badly can often be fixed by changing the orientation, layer height, part density, rafting, and support. If you're willing to invest the time and learn what works, then the Cubex can still be a good tool. For additional information and high resolution pictures of parts I've built on the Cubex, visit www.hobbyprojectsite.com.